how heavy should you go for mass versus strength versus power? By the end of this video, I'll have broken down the results of dozens of studies to give you the science-based answer. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. Different people train for different goals. Me, I just train for the soul. Couldn't live without it. But Dak, I hear you saying, I only train to maximize shareholder value and because I'm forced to do so. And I have insert X or Y goal in mind. I hear you, Corporate Drone. Here's what to do. Fortunately, big man Paul Swinton has performed a meta regression on several hundreds of studies on exactly this topic to find out how heavy should you lift for different goals. Now, I hear you saying, why did you just call a researcher big man? Well, because if ever, you call any sports scientist a pencil neck again. I see you in my comments. Paul Swinton will straight up show up at your house, mog 405 for 10 close grip bench, and then leave. And you will be mogged. And you will never indulge in such indiscretions again as to call sports scientists pencil necks. Feel me? Where was I? Oh yes, how heavy to lift for different goals. Well, Paul Swinton and colleagues looked at 295 studies and analyzed them to see how heavy should people lift to maximize strength, power, etc. Essentially, when looking at all of these studies, was there an intensity or a percentage of your one rep max that maximized improvements in strength, power, jumping, sprinting, etc.? First, good news, resistance training interventions, aka lifting weights, did increase strength, power, jumping abilities, sprinting abilities, and even agility. So lifting weights is good news for a variety of goals. The largest improvements were seen for strength outcomes. And that makes sense because strength is a relatively unskilled thing for the most part. And there is less of a specificity component as opposed to something like jumping or sprinting, which has much more of a skilled component. Sprinting in particular has a pretty meaningful technical component, which means that transference from lifting weights and getting stronger in the gym to how well you sprint isn't as strong as for something like just pure strength. Another caveat is that very few of these studies looked at agility outcomes, but ultimately who cares about agility? We're freaks. All I care about is strength, aka how much I can lift, muscle, and finally, Flexibility, you feel me? Insert Jason Genoa clip. Straight out of the hospital, baby. It's John Cena. First, let's look at strength. And basically for strength, the heavier you go, the better. And this applied all the way to like 90 to 100% of your wonder max. With that being said, there was a slight inflection point around 70% where additional benefits of going heavier and heavier for how much strength you gained started to slow down. And this makes sense. Specificity is very important. And if you're looking to get maximally strong in short duration expressions of strength, like for example, I wonder if Max, if you're a powerlifter, going heavier is more specific to your outcome of interest. It is more similar to what you're training for. Essentially, train as you mean to compete. So if you're training for maximum strength, most of your training should be pretty heavy. However, it should likely also be submaximal. And based on some results from Robinson and colleagues looking at the relationship between how close to failure you go and strength gains, it looks like you essentially want to go as heavy as possible, but you also want to be submaximal and never go too close to failure for strength. Maybe unless you're trying to get a little bigger in the off season, or maybe unless you're right before a competition and you want to practice the skill of grinding out a heavy lift. Next up, we have sprinting. It seems like for sprinting gains, going heavier also seems beneficial. Now, I don't really care about sprinting, so I'm going to move past this, but it's worth mentioning. Next up, we have jumping. Specifically with jumping, we kind of see the opposite of a strength, where going a little bit lighter is beneficial. And specifically, the best improvements in jumping capabilities appear to be seen around 30 to 50% of your one rep max. As the authors point out, this likely has to do with what loads maximize power output during, for example, the squat jump exercise. It seems like relatively low loads of say between 30 and 50% of your max at the most, maximize power output during that exercise. And because jumping involves very high power outputs at fast contraction velocities, we want to roughly mimic that within the gym. Again, following the principle of specificity. Importantly though, keep in mind this recommendation is as a percentage of your max, which means that if you've never lifted weights and you go from say a squat jump max of 100 kilograms or 225 pounds to a squat jump max of 140, 
that weight you should be using in the gym also increases. The percentage stays the same, but as you get stronger, the absolute load on the bar should increase. But to summarize, between 30 to 50% of your max for jumping improvements is really effective. And finally, we have power. For power, it seems like going moderately heavy is best, around 50 to 60% of your max. And this also makes sense. In many power exercises, as the authors point out, power output is maximized somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 70% of your max. So if you're looking to get more powerful than 30 to 70%, or maybe 50 to 60 on average is going to be a great ballpark to start with. And finally, we have the reason you're probably here, and that's hypertrophy. Now, I have a whole video on the topic of how heavy should you be going, how many reps should you be doing, that I'll link above, but let me break down the quick, concise takeaway points from the rep range research. The data on how heavy to go to maximize muscle building was synthesized in a review paper by Schoenfeld and colleagues in 2021. In this paper, they point out that the best intensity to use while lifting weights in the gym is likely between around 30% of your max and 85% of your max. They essentially establish a bottom threshold of maximally effective intensities and a top threshold of maximally effective intensities based on some of the research out there. For instance, we have a few studies now looking at sets of fewer than five reps versus sets of more than five reps. And generally doing fewer than five reps seems to reduce hypertrophy a little bit compared to the same number of sets, but just doing at least five reps per set. Similarly, we have a few studies comparing more moderate intensities of say 40 to 80% of your max to lower intensities, say between 20 or 15 and 40% of your max. And generally, worse hypertrophy is seen when going below 30% of your max within these studies. For instance, a study by Lasavikis and colleagues compared 20% to 40% to 60% to 80% of your max and its effects on hypertrophy, and generally found slightly worse hypertrophy with 20% as opposed to 80%. Conversely, in a study by Mitchell and colleagues where they compared 30% of your max to 80% of your max in new lateral leg extensions, they found similar hypertrophy. And so, based on a relatively limited amount of studies, it seems like around 30% is the lightest you would want to go on a per set basis to maximize hypertrophy. Importantly, most people training for muscle mass gains don't really think in terms of percentage of your owner max. You're probably not testing your owner max very often. So in that case, let me give you some equivalents of what 30% of your max means and 85% of your max means. According to a paper by Nuzo and colleagues, on average, though there is some variability depending on the exercise being performed, the person performing it, etc., with 30% of your max, you can do around 50 reps, five zero reps. Conversely, with 85% of your max, you can do around five reps. And so all else being equal, provided you're pushing sufficiently close to failure, even with those higher reps that are often quite difficult, doing sets of between five and 50 reps is going to be roughly equally effective for hypertrophy. Importantly, there might be a benefit in terms of a hypertrophy to combining different rep ranges and not just sticking to one. So while you might be tempted to just do sets of six, that is likely counter-advised. And in-house meta-analysis by Zach Robinson showed that there might be a slight benefit in terms of muscle growth to including a variety of rep ranges versus just one. If nothing else, most people enjoy using a variety of rep ranges and not just always going heavy or light for hypertrophy training. With that being said, let me give you a few use cases and cases where it might not be wise to use heavier work and lighter work for hypertrophy. First, going super light when you're training for muscle mass is pretty miserable, and you might find that you find it difficult to reach quite as close to failure and that's supported by research. Our own research group performed a scoping review finding that most people are pretty accurate at gauging how close to failure they are until they go much above around 12 reps per set. And so for most people, going super light and doing a ton of reps, they'll find it difficult to go quite as close to failure. And going close to failure is relatively important when it comes to building mass. For instance, a recent meta-regression by Robinson and colleagues found that in a given set, the closer you go to failure, the more muscle mass it builds. Because of this reason, I recommend most people training for muscle mass go relatively heavy most of the time, between say five and 12 reps. However, you should still be performing some of your training a little bit lighter, maybe in the 10 to 30 rep range, maybe even higher sometimes. With that being said, let me give you a few use cases for when you may want to go a little bit lighter when training for muscle mass. First, as I mentioned, some of your training should still be pretty light if you want to maximize hypertrophy, as there is some evidence suggesting it's more beneficial to combine different rep ranges, go heavy on some days, lighter on some days, versus just always going heavy or always going light. Second, when you're dealing with an injury or pain from going pretty heavy, you might find that you can get more training in by going a little bit lighter and you get less pain doing so. Third, sometimes you don't have a choice. If you're traveling and you're training with body weight and you're doing push-ups, for example, you might find you need to do 30 to 50 reps to get close to failure. And getting close to failure is important for hypertrophy. And finally, preference. Some people prefer training heavier, some people prefer training lighter. The good news is with muscle mass, 
you can use a variety of rep ranges and still see a really solid effect. Building bigger muscles is not that specific of an adaptation as compared to say strength, power, sprinting, jumping, etc. The only thing I'm specific about is that if you don't have 20 inch arms, get off my channel immediately. There can only be one king pencil neck, and that's me. That is the video. Gave you recommendations for how heavy to go for strength, power, muscle mass, sprinting, jumping. I really did it all. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see me cover. Now you might be saying, Okay, Dr. Milo Wolf, you got the PhD in sports science, you know how heavy to go, I don't want to be thinking about that stuff. Well, in just a few months, you won't have to anymore. We've been working on a training app called MyoAdapt for the last few years. It's designed to do everything a great evidence-based coach would do for you, but as something you can have in your pocket on your phone, at a fraction of the price of most coaches. It does all the thinking for you, adjusts the weight for you week to week, makes sure you get a variety of rep ranges in, make sure you're picking the right rep ranges for the right exercises, and to be honest, my team and I have been working on this for years and we're confident in saying there is nothing like it out there. It's going to write you an individualized training program based on your goals and adjust your training week to week to make sure you're continuing to make as much progress as possible. With several PhDs in sports science having designed the app, you're getting the most cutting edge information there is. And more importantly, you don't have to think about this stuff anymore. I've been training with it myself and I've been enjoying just not having to think about it anymore. It's been a pleasure. So if you'd like to get notified when it gets released, check out myodap.com to get emailed when it finally comes out. And if you sign up for it early, you'll lock in at a lower price than anyone else. If you'd like me to coach you, check out the link above and we can make that happen. In the meantime, have a fantastic day, train heavy, train light, train moderate, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.